What's happening, guys? It's TJ. Alice, you dad. Welcome to another episode of That Is SEC News to Me. This is my top offensive lineman to watch in 2018. These are the young men that I've been watching since they, their freshman year in most cases. I don't get too excited about recruits. I only count them once they have been borrowed on the field of the SEC. And these are the guys that are rock solid, ready to play this year, ready to dominate this year, and I'm not going to waste no time. Here's my top 10 offensive linemen to watch in 2018. Number 10, I'm going to my LSU Tigers. That's right. For Sadiq Charles. I love this kid. <laughs> I do. Anybody who can play against Alabama as a freshman. We, we started this guy as a freshman, he's been on the field since he got to LSU, right? He was on the SEC all-freshman squad. Plays primarily on the left side of the line, but man, this young man has earned his keep. He is he is everything that we thought he was going to be. Big old six foot five offensive lineman and pound for pound. Um, we're blessed to have this young man. You know, and, and one of the things I like about Coach O, Coach O threw this kid into the fire. He didn't get any grace. And this is why I love him so much because he really does remind me of another one of my favorite offensive linemen is Cam Robinson. This kid reminds me, this Louisiana kid reminds me of Cam Robinson in every sense of the word. Um, he's going to emerge as the leader uh, of that O-line, you know, when his time comes. But right now, he has a, a strong supporting cast, and that's why I have him on the list as one of the top 10 to watch in the SEC. He's a sophomore this year. Keep your eyes on Mr. Charles all year. Next up, I'm going to those fighting roosters over there in South Carolina Gamecocks for Zach Bailey. That's right. Give me Zach Bailey. I love this kid, man. This young man is six foot six, 314 pounds. He can play up and down the line. Doesn't matter where you put him. You need him, you need, hey, you need the blind side covered, he got it. You need over here covered, you got it. You need him to be able to play guard, he got it. That's, that's why I like him, man. He's an extremely versatile, um, big, strong guy. Um, but pass protection is his strength. Okay. Uh, if you want somebody to really lock down, pick up a blitz, shut down a stunt, it doesn't matter if another lineman goes down, Zach can get right in there and play whatever that position is. It's unbelievably talented. And number nine is coming from South Carolina, Zach Bailey. Next up, number eight on my list. It's coming from that ugly school up there in Tuscaloosa. But I, I have to, you know me, I give respect where it's due. And Ross Pierce the center for Alabama, um, he's formidable, man. Um, I've watched this guy get to the second level and, and wipe out two linebackers, <laughs> you know. He's like having an offensive coordinator on the field, you know, like and in Little League football when they let coaches like myself stand behind the line of scrimmage and, and pick up the kid and move the kid over there. That's sort of like what he is. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's like a little league coach on the field with the rest of the team. But much, much respect to Ross Pierce Batcher, man. Um, top SEC lineman to watch. Next up, I'm going to the swamp. Number seven on the list is Jawan Teller. From the Gators. Yeah, this is a great story coming out of Florida. Um, this offensive lineman, man, six foot five, big old brute. <laughs> when you think of brute force, man, this is the guy that's out there mauling people over, you know, just bulldozing guys over. Um, I, I watched him. I love to watch this guy play, man. I don't like to watch him against my Tigers. I don't, <laughs> but um, it will play against anybody else. I love to watch uh, Mr. Taylor play 
Um, he's another one of these big physical guys that the NFL is going to absolutely love. Yeah, um, they're going to scoop him up, man, especially 334 pounds. You know, that <laughs> pass protection, he's going to have a much better year this year. I don't, you know, they put a couple of checks on him, you know, as the things that he needs to improve on. I don't think, I just think they're nitpicking the guy. Yeah, yeah, you know, all offensive linemen will have that one or two games that they would like to have back. But overall, I think that this is the year that he pulls it all together and puts himself in a position, right, to dominate um, and not only the SEC, but to be a, a dominant offensive lineman in college football. So number seven on my list is out of the swamp, Mr. Six Foot Five, 334, Jawan Teller. Next guy, man, I had to rehearse his name to say it, but he's a real deal football player, man. Joe for Hope, offensive guard out of Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas has a long tradition of these hogs. This is no difference. This is another six foot five guy, man. Big old natural skill set. You know, still it's still coming through the developmental stage of things, but you know, I like the kid, man. He's two years in. Think he's going to be a first round draft pick. I do. Um, based on his size, um, his experience going against top defensive tackles, the line. I think this is the year that you, you begin to watch Arkansas return to the McFadden days when they were able to run the ball at will. When they didn't even think about passing the ball, I think that's going to happen this year, right? And it's going to be, you know, a lot, a lot to do with the number six offensive tackle on my list from the Hawks of Fayetteville. And next on my list, I'm going to the University of Georgia for Andrew Thomas. That's right, offensive tackle. Andrew Thomas, six foot five, 320 pounds. Some felt that he was the best um, freshman in the country last year, you know. Uh, Georgia is loaded, man. I've, I've often said it a lot. Georgia has a lot of depth. And one of the things about it is that even with all of the depth that they have, sometimes some of these freshmen beat out people. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of focus on Georgia offense, um, especially coming off of that national championship game when they just couldn't seem to get another point on the board. I think all of that extra attention this offseason to building a more high-powerful, high uh, high-powered offense is is only going to benefit guys like Andrew Thomas because you're going to get a chance to see his pass protection highlighted, debut, displayed. He's going to have the footage for the NFL because I think Judge is going to pass this ball a lot. Number four on my list, I'm going to uh, one of the most talented, loaded programs in the SEC, and that's Tennessee. Tennessee has a offensive tackle I love, man. Trey Smith. Trey Smith fell in love with this kid during the Alabama game. <laughs> watching him, watching him sling them little linebackers around, man. <laughs> I I loved it. Six foot six, three hundred twenty pounds, man. There's a video of me screaming at the television, right during I believe it was a it was a Tennessee Florida game. I'm just screaming at the TV, run the ball, man, run the ball, run the ball. One of the reasons why I was screaming at the television so much is because they got this big old offensive lineman, you know, which I think is one of the best offensive linemen in the country, man. And and that's in, you know, Trey Smith. Uh he had some he had some little health issues in the offseason, but kid is gonna bounce back. He's only missed a spring. He was he was there for Tennessee, you know, the whole rip. Um and I, I I looked forward to watching him when we played him. You know, it was just a messy, nasty game. You know, had to had to take cover. But um, Trey Smith is one of my favorite. Um, I have him down as number four. I really wanted to put him higher. You know, just want to see how he adjusts after this health scare. But number four on my list from Tennessee Volunteers is Trey Smith. Next on my list of top SEC offensive linemen to watch, I'm number three on the list is Gary Brumfield from my <laughs> LSU Tigers. I call him Gary Roblox Brumfield. Yeah, you got it. You got to turn around. 
You got to turn around, but you're not going through them. You're not going through them. You're not going around them. <laughs> the only thing you can do is turn around. This is this is the the center, man. This is the rib cage of our offensive line. And I, I think he's going to have a huge year. You know I wanted to put him higher. You know I wanted to put him higher than number three because you know I'm Homer Simpson when it comes to my LSU Tigers. But he's right where he's right. I think I have him placed perfectly at number three this year. And we're going to need him. I mean, we're really going to need him because we, you know, this is the only year that people feel that we have a question mark at our running backs position. You know, imagine that LSU has a question mark at running back. Well, this is the only year that people feel that way. And this is this gentleman here is the reason why I am not worried. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping well at night. <laughs> I do. I sleep well at night and thinking about our running game because, you know, Mr. Roadblock is there and he's going to help. You know, he's going to get us going. Number two. Yeah, I have two of them on my list. I don't like putting two of them on my list. But I don't have no choice. <laughs> Jonah. Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. Um, some have him down as the best offensive tackle, not just in the F SEC, but in the entire country. You know. And it's a it's an honor that this young man has earned it. You know, he's decorated. It's gotta be the most decorated offensive lineman ever. <laughs> You know, ever just just with the amount of championships and playoffs that this guy has been in, you know, but this is somebody that Nick Saban has to be excited, you know, because this this young man has given his all to this program up there in Tuscaloosa and um, he can start in the NFL tomorrow morning. You know, I mean, I, I think he's only at Alabama right now because he. He trying to go back to back, which ain't going to happen, which is not going to happen. <laughs> but all jokes aside, um, if they do go back to back, it's going to be because of the leadership of Jonah Williams. Um, he's a winner. He knows how to win. He knows how to get guys around him winning. And the continuity of, of championships that exist at Alabama is because of guys like Jonah Williams. And, you know, it makes my kidney hurt to say these things, but it's true. So. Before I throw up on video, um, I, I have to give all respect due to this young man um, at my nemesis school, Alabama, because he is worthy of the respect and all honor given to Jonah Williams, Alabama. And number one, number one going to shock a lot of people. It ain't shock me. Doesn't shock the football prophet. I think he's the best. Greg Little at Ole Miss. I think he's the best. <laughs> you know? And some people are nick him on certain things. They'll nick him on this and nick him on that. But Mr. 6'6", 325 pounds. I watched this guy. I watched this guy toss a, a defensive tackle, man. Uh, you know, 10 yards. <laughs> you know? I just, he, he's so good. I, you know, during the game, I had to stop and do some research on a player. Like, I had to pause the football game and go research who this young man was during the game because, you know, he was, he was that amazing. He was, you know, it was in certain games, it looked like a grown man out there playing with junior high. He, all NFL teams were going to have this guy at the top of the list, right? And so, I stand behind this 100%. And, and that's because I've watched every Ole Miss football game. Every last one of them. Some of the games I've watched twice. And when I'm watching this game, offensive line is one of my favorite positions. You know, because cornerback, we don't get to see that much of that. But offensive line, you get to see offensive line the entire game. And one of the things that I love about watching uh, a football game it's in particular, Ole Miss football game is for the opportunity to watch uh, Greg Little. Um, high character, high integrity guy. You know, the issues they had that draft night a couple of years ago, they're not going to have with this guy. This guy is a real leader. Keep your eyes on my number one 
offensive tackle to watch in 2018 because at the end of this year, it's not going to leave any doubt, any doubt. Don't pay attention to anybody else but the football profit. It's not going to leave any doubt that Greg Little is the number one offensive lineman to watch in 2018. I guarantee it. That's it, guys. That's it. That's my list. <laughs> That's my list. I know some of you are going to disagree. You always disagree. That's why we do it. That's what makes it fun. Put your guys down there in the comment. If I miss somebody you thought should have been on the list, let's make sure they get recognized by putting them down in the comments. These are just the guys that I am watching. Some of them are off the radar, guys. I don't just look for the ESPN crew. You know, the people that they like, I look for the guys that I have seen. I have been in the stadium, and those are the guys that I like from the film and being there in the stadium and watching them, you know, in, in real time. And this is the group that I like. And my number one guy this year is out of Ole Miss, Greg Little, and I'm looking forward to watching them. That's my list, guys. Thank you so much. And next up on top players to watch in the SEC, running backs. <laughs> running backs. That's right. We're going running backs on my next video. That's all I got out to see you on the next one. It's your boy down in New Orleans, TJ Allen.